Hi everyone, it's Justine here from House of Mahalo. Hello, good to see you. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm doing fine. Um, I'm doing this video early in the morning because we're going through another heatwave scorcher week. Not quite the same as last time, but um, enough that, yeah, it's pretty hot in here right now. Um, but I thought I would pop on and do a little make with you. So um, these are going to be some little like pocket notebooks. Now this one isn't finished but just to give you an idea of what it is. It's a six by six piece of paper folded in half, nice and easy. I've then taken another six by six, chopped that in half so you've got uh, three inches high here and then here and here are two little pockets. And then what we're going to do, um, and I want to do these all together, is pop some papers in, stitch them in, and then have that be the closure. Now, this isn't nothing new. I'm sure these have been done plenty of times, but um, yeah, we're just going to make some together for my Tim Holtz projects. Um, and for the front, I have done some dies, these book plate dies, using my Global Land uh, dies. So um, yeah, I'll talk about those a little bit more detail when we get to that part but for now let's go ahead and make a plan okay so this one is a little bit different where um, these two are just off cuts from something else but I thought the strip made sense as a pocket so you don't have to do a six by six and a second six by six just yeah use your use your off cuts basically Okay, so I just need to do a little bit of trimming, so I can bring in my nice fancy trimmer that uh, many of you have helped me to <laughs> helped me to, to buy. Um, I bought this with my buy me a coffee money, so I'm looking forward to, to getting it used. Okay, right. Sorry about the squeaky chair. Um, which way around does that go? this way um okay so I'll need to do a little bit of trimming to get them to be the size that I want because um when you fold your papers in what you'll probably find is you get a bit of an overhang so what I basically do is just take off a little bit extra to like compensate for that I guess so that we're just housed nicely in there and as you know I don't do measuring so <laughs> I'm sure those of you who know how to use a ruler and whatnot will be much faster than me but hey ho okay so yeah I hope you're hope you're all okay as I say it's a uh, another heat wave kind of a week but um so far doesn't seem to be quite like it was still enough that it's unusual and and what have you but um just bearable I would say okay that should be fine so we're going to pop them together and we are going to pop a thumb notch in the top just to make getting into the pockets a little bit easier so I'm just going to take two at a time and have everything flick me in the eyeball and let's just ink around so yeah just a really simple make today nothing nothing fancy um, but it does give us a chance to have a little bit of a chat I suppose um, it's uh, my birthday next week um, that's the August 30th is my birthday for those of you who would like to know. Um, I don't know what we're doing for it yet. I'm sure we'll do something. Um, and it's also our anniversary very soon. Uh, three years wedding anniversary. And um, for that, we are going to go to... It's basically like an illumination experience I guess is, is is what to call it it's brand new to Bristol and never I just saw an advert on YouTube for it so there you are watch the ads sometimes you do get interesting information in it and uh, yeah I googled it and thought oh it's in Bristol 
and um, it turned out to be, yeah, it's like this illumination, almost like an art show, but with lights and music and, and stuff like that, you know? Um, we went to something similar in Singapore during our honeymoon, and it was amazing. So, fingers crossed, we can experience something just as amazing right here in Bristol. Um, as always, I'll be sure to let you know what it's like. Okay, so that's our two pockets in. Um, so I'm just going to round the corners. If my DB WhatsApp will go through everything, let's hope so. our pockets but that didn't round very well so just bear with me as I figure that out again. There we are. Uh-huh. Um, and then as I say we want to have a book plate on the front. So these are from um, uh, Global Land. It's part of my partnership with them. So I want to put the book plates at the top. Now, I'll just show you quickly. These are the dies that I've used, all different types. Can you see those? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I thought they would be really handy little book plates where you don't want too much bulk. So we can just cut them out of um, like paper or, in this case, scraps of card. Um, and this is sort of how they, how they look when they're cut out like so and then I'm keeping all of these little off cuts um, you get bits like this out of the middle um, because they can be used uh, as book plates as well for example this one I had to cut the the whole piece down a little bit smaller um, or actually quite a bit smaller um, so I used just one of the little ones and just glued a word on top um, and I've got this pretty pink one just move those over over the way um, and then I've got some various words here, um, those two, well, yeah, various words that, as far as I'm aware, fit within here. So I'm putting it up towards the top because we're going to have some string just here, so I don't want that getting in the way. So what should we call this one? I think dream's quite nice. Or the yeah it sort of goes with this colouring as well I think so let's go with dream especially as it's quite a pretty pretty paper that one so how best to do this then um, I think I need to cut it down a bit at the top there we are and then just position that in And just a teensy, teensy bit at the sides. Because I don't want to see the paper uh, through the through the book plate. So it's got like holes in the side of the book plate, if that makes sense. Yeah, that'll look pretty. So how best to glue this then? If I put glue here... That should be okay. And then we'll glue the whole thing down anyway. Let's make sure it's straight. Yeah, I can see these being useful to have, definitely, these, these dies. As I say, for when you don't want to have a metal book plate, you know, something bulky and heavy, but you still want something that looks kind of fancy. I'm just putting a little bit of ink around the edge, um, not to grungy it up or anything, but just to, to catch any white edges. So then we'll put glue the whole way along. Oops. I had that sudden thought, am I in, <laughs> am I in frame? There we go. 
trying to position it to hide the, the date because I don't want to have half a date or something at the top there on the paper. But still want it to be middle-ish. How's that? It's cute, isn't it? Yes, I like that. Very sweet. So, um, we need to put the papers in and obviously stitch the papers, which will also be the closure. But, I mean, you don't have to turn it into a notebook. It could just be a little pockety thing, which would be quite nice as well. So, shall we get some more done? It's only been about 10 minutes. So if I get the whole bunch done and then try and my best to do it as, like, mass make <laughs> style. Yeah, I don't do mass making very well, as many of you will know by now. So let's do the, shall we do the pretty ones? Yes, let's do the pretty ones. Um, because I'm loving this, this, like, pretty Tim Holtz. I'm loving it, actually. So, right. So... This is one where I think it needs chopping down a tad. That's my terrible measuring again. So first things first, I'm going to chop this uh, six by six or six by three, I should say, in half. Ish. It's not really completely so. And then come in a little bit. I hope it's clear what it is I'm trying to achieve here. Um, basically, it's just a little a little notebook, isn't it? That looks to be fine. That looks to be fine. Now, do we want these to be as tall as that, or do we want them to be a bit smaller, I think? Um, because I like the Jones. So let's just pop these together and take a bit off. So if we are three high, I think if we take off half an inch, so we want them to be, let's go for two and a half. Keeping those little bits, they usually come in handy for something. Have to be perfect okay we'll do our thumb notch. so yeah this is just a really although it does need to be straight is that straight oh, I don't think that's straight let me just check I think it was my eyes I don't know I can never tell whether something's straight or not it really doesn't look straight I'm sure it's not just me Yep, definitely my eyes because the trimmer is telling me everything is fine. So, don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just get a bit of ink. Yeah, I'm not very good with mask making. Um, I've always said it's because um, I struggle with doing the same thing over and over again. Um, I don't know why. You would think that actually you would get like in a good sort of mode, like mass make mode, you know, and all the rest of it. But it just doesn't work for me. Um, but I want to learn because I want to be able to make things a little bit quicker because I do feel like I dilly dally a lot, don't I? Oops. That's how I feel anyway. Um, but then, of course, I watched the videos back. And then it looks like I've gone, you know, the speed is completely fine. Like, you know, some days I may be a bit faster or, or more clued up than, than others, sure. Um, but for the most part, you know, I'll watch the video and I think, well, I didn't go as slowly as I thought then. But I think it's just because you've got that countdown happening. But stop looking at the countdown, Justine, <laughs> and just make something. If I get um, one more of these done, I think that will be fine. We'll get all the pretty ones done, shall we? There we are. I'm not worried about there being a funny space there, because as I say, papers are going to be there, so you won't be able to see that part. So all is fine. Just 
Let's round our corners. So yeah, this is just a really simple, simple little thing you could be doing with your six by sixes or your your scraps to make the little pockets and things, you know. Lots of um lots of ways to to change this up and what have you. Right, let's um decide on the book plates. So I think there's a lot of pink on here already. So I probably want to go with a brown one. I don't really want to cover up the flower. But equally um, we have got the we're gonna have the string across so it does need to go up there really. <laughs> decisions, decisions. It's either the big one with a word in or the little one with now I think I'm going to go little because it's quite busy paper and those innards need using anyway. So I just need to find a word in my box of wonders here um, that would go with this. How perfect is that for sizing? This is a word from the journal boat um, that I've had in my stash for ages. Um, and. Well, that fits perfectly on there. That's good, isn't it? If I could glue in a straight line. There we are. Perfect. There we are. That'll go in the middle there, so we're not covering up the flower or anything and we've still got space for our string or twine it's my dog grumbling outside my door if you could hear that it's <laughs> moaning it's too hot mummy <laughs> it's too hot I know the feeling Kai I know the feeling Okay, let's do this last one then. Um, so we've not been too bad, too bad for time, have we? So once again, we've got the six by three folded in half, and well, cut in half. I did think I was going to fold them, um, but they just kept poking out from the side of the notebook. And oh my goodness me, it was half driving me nuts. <laughs> Really, really annoying me. So in the end, I just thought, ah, we'll just, yeah, you know, we'll just um, do it this way instead. So I liked the two and a half uh, height, I think. So we'll do two of those. Where is two and a half? There it is. And this is four in here. So that way around. So let's do our thumb notches again. Um, and that will be four, um, four ready to be bound in, which is not too bad, is it? Hasn't been very long. Well, we've done three together, haven't we? I did the first one off, off screen, didn't I? Yeah. So as far as a, a mini mass make, um, I think that's good enough going for me. Like, um, I'm getting ready to start uh, Tina's mass makes in September. Um, I'll be doing those once a week, just because I want to. I want to get a bit faster when it comes to building up ephemera, because um, I do feel like sometimes maybe I'm a bit slow. Um, which is nothing nothing wrong with that at all but in terms of like you know because I'm looking to sell my pieces and things um, I do feel like you know it would be better for me to be a little bit faster um, 
so that's that and um and for videos as well really let's be honest so that's that and then um and then in top of that i'm thinking it will also help me to branch out with regards to what kind of ephemera i make um because it, it can be very easy to just keep going to the same things over and over again and like you watch a video and think oh i'm not doing that it looks too complicated um type thing and then i feel like because of that i then struggle with like branching out and trying new things so i think the mass makes because it's a challenge that i want to complete kind of thing i'm feeling like it would be uh it would like push me out of my comfort zone a good amount you know so yeah i'm excited for those really um some of you will know this already but i'll be doing them in a secret garden theme <clears throat> which is a very exciting project i think <laughs> in my opinion it is and uh Okay, so once again we'll put a book plate on the front and I think we'll go brown. It does mean we end up covering up Daniel's name. Sorry Daniel Levis, but I think that will look nice. So what word do we want? So as I mentioned these are for, these dyes are from Global Land. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, um, but the information is listed below. Um, and there is a discount code if you're interested in purchasing anything from them. I'm just trying to decide on a word now. I like the colour of those. Um, now this, Be Fearlessly Authentic, does just fit in, so that's a maybe. But then we also have ones like this oh no that's that's not too big too big oh, that's too big they, those must have been for the other book plates oh yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> well that narrows it down um i might go with this one because it's only paper and i'm thinking what sits in there you'll never know so let's do that and then that will be the last one so let's get this cut down Yeah, I can really see these these dyes being really helpful. As I say, I wanted a way to have stuff like this, but without the bulk of brads and metals and things like that. Just, yeah, for a little notebook thing. Um, and sometimes, you know, on the front of a journal even, you don't want um, something big and heavy. Um, I find that for... Um, uh, what's it called like fabric cover journals sometimes you don't want the big the big heavy book plate on because it doesn't always look look right you know if you're going with a very um lacy delicate type of a, a theme you know um which as many of you know that is my usual style so it's all right i'll stop gushing about um, <laughs> about dyes now but it was very helpful uh, for me to have that partnership because I did need to build up my dies a bit more because um, I am starting to use my machine uh, much more than I was. Vaguely in the middle, that'll do. And then, yeah, we'll just glue the, the whole thing down. And then we need to figure out the, um, the binding. Again, it's binding I've never done. Um, ooh, dropping it. Um, you know, it's various videos on what I'm about to do, but, um, I've never done it, so let's find out together how, how easy it is. Okay. Alright, so that's, um, right, we don't need the trimmer just yet. So we have got these looking all right aren't they so i'll do those two later um no big deal right 
So I've got this twine, which I've never used for binding. So this will either go really well or horribly wrong. <laughs> and we need to find out. So I've got my awl, but I do need to find my um, book binding needle. So let me get myself cleared up and organised and we'll do the binding part now. Okay, right, I think I'm ready. Um, so I basically just ra raided my scrap papers. Um, so these are all like plain papers for writing on. You know, scraps of note paper, tea dyed paper and uh, fly sheets in books, um, lined paper and randomly some passport paper, graph paper, just all odds and ends to give us a very scrappy looking piece but you know um i like that for this this project so let's pop those in so i'm going to do three holes and just eyeballing it i'm doing them quite close together just because i've got some small pieces of paper in here so I want to, uh, you know, try to catch most most of it. And I've done all that and haven't threaded my needle. So I'm going to take off lots and lots of this twine um, because I also want this to be a closure. But I don't want to waste. So part of me is thinking if I keep it on the roll, maybe that would that would be work fine. Okay, I changed my mind about the uh, twine. Um, it was just too thick, so I'm going to use embroidery floss instead. So normally I would start, um, to do a three-hole pamphlet for stitch, I would normally start in the middle of the notebook to end in the middle and uh, tie a bow. This time I'm going to start from the outside, and I'm sure many of you would have you know, tried this before. And I'm leaving quite a long tail because this is also, hopefully, <laughs> going to be our closure. And so then I'm going to come along to either the bottom or the, the top hole. I'm sure many of you have done a three hole pamphlet stitch by now. Then I'm going to come to the other hole, top hole. I'm just trying to keep my papers in the right place. I'm being lazy and not using a paper clip, so. Because <laughs> it's only five sheets, but I probably should have used a paper clip. There are my papers, there you are. Okay. Okay, so we pulled that through, and then we're going to go out the middle hole again. Oops, like so. So let me take my needle off. And we want one strand either side of the middle strand, like that. Just like you would a normal three hole pamphlet stitch. gonna check. It's only a little notebook but I still like everything to be you know nicely nicely tight and everything and we're gonna secure that with a knot. In my case I'm gonna do a, a double knot. Right over left, left over right type of thing you know. Definitely didn't need as much string as that. And then we can use that as our closure for the little notebook.
do you think to that? Just tying a knot in the ends of the um, embroidery floss so that it doesn't uh, unravel. And then we can trim off the ends. There we are. So yeah, there's our little notebook and we have a pocket in the front and a pocket in the back. All seems fine in there. Yeah, and then as I say, this doubles up as the closure as well. Um, of course, you don't have to keep it like that. You could just tie a bow, um, you know, near your knot like you would normally. Um, but I, th I, f I felt like it would be authentic to... Uh, the journal that I'm doing is quite um, old worldy. And I felt like, you know, in the olden days of a junk journal, like when they weren't called that, you know, you would try and use what you've got on hand and yeah. Okay, that's one. Right. Um, I hope did, <laughs> did you get all that? Uh, I'm not convinced I did. Right, let's go with this one. So I was basically just going with an array of papers. So we've got tea dyed paper, graph paper, quite like this this one in the middle uh, just five sheets is all I've gone for and what else should we have have this one it's butterfly paper and then I'll put in a final graph paper great way to use up different scraps and things that you've got you know okay so let's pop that in and I've done that thing again where I want to poke my holes before I've <laughs> before I've threaded my needle but that's okay um here it is so again the three holes and to thread my needle so we we want about three I think four times the height of our little notebook should be fine and then I'll do a little bit, bit extra just to be sure that should be enough So again, we're starting on the outside. And <laughs> move in my papers in the process. Now just think, you could have just got on a paper clip. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, get a paper clip. <laughs> get a paper clip, Justin. Stop being so lazy. Right. Um, Yes, I know, I've even got some paint as well. Okay. It's because it's such a tiny little thing that I'm like, oh, I don't need to use a... I don't need to use all that, but yes, I do. Okay. And that, my ladies... <laughs> why I don't do binding on camera because it is half a pickle sometimes okay. so yeah again we're starting from the outside leaving quite a long tail go along to your next hole along to the final third hole ok 
get yourself in a right knot with your, your long tail and then out through the middle hole again. Just be wary of not going through your string but if you do it, it doesn't matter, you can, you can always take it out again. And then we want one, one end either side of our piece in the middle like that. I always take the paper clip off at this point because when you're tightening up your binding, you want those papers to be loose so that they have freedom to move with where they need to go, if that makes sense. But if they're paper clipped in, then they can't move to be uh, tight. That's our, our double knot. Okay. And then we will tie our bow. Yeah, so four, four times the height of the book was like too many. <laughs> Absolutely too many. But the best to have it be you know too long then not long enough isn't it okay and then again we'll just tie a knot in the end of the string tie that a bit tighter I think. You don't want to tie it too tight that you pull at your binding with a binding like this um, but we do want them to be flat because these are to go in journals so there we go number one uh, number two sorry let's get the third one done so I've got a sheet there, let's go with this one in the middle, is that the right way around? Oops, it's upside down. Mm. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not bothered about what papers I'm using or anything, it's just, yeah, they're just, they're just scraps. Uh, that's four and one last one let's go with this butterfly and I like that they're all different heights as well I find that very interesting for a project like this oh, let's, um, let's pop this paper clip on <laughs> okay so again three holes Remember to thread your needle <laughs> and we'll just go again. So yeah, as I say, just a really, really simple little make. I do like doing those sometimes because, well, actually I'd like doing them a lot of times because, yeah, you can get a lot done in a short amount of time and have these ready to go in journals for when you want to use use them and yes definitely easier with the paper clip <laughs> um, they're also a great project for beginners as well um, right again take off your paper clip uh, because you're only binding you know a, a tiny little notebook I do want more string on this side though so I'm just going to don't think I left quite a long enough tail so I want I want more oh, 
you can see I've gone through my threads there. So we'll just untangle that. There we are. One on each side of your string. I already took the paper clip off, didn't I? Just give that a nice little tug. Not so much that you, you know, rip your papers or anything, but enough that things will be nice and snug. And there we go. So I will just do the last one, um, but yeah, by now, I'm sure many of you will have gotten the, the picture as to what it is that we're doing, that we've been doing. And as I say, this was for, uh, well, it's for my Tim Holtz journal, but I've also used the uh, Global Land dies, um, which is for my partnership with them this month. So. Um, there is discount codes information in the description box in case you are interested in any of their products. Um, there we go. As I say, these are these little book plate dies that I've been using. They're really sweet. All right. Last one. So this one is slightly narrower. So I'm hoping these papers will still fit so let's just give it a go and see what happens you can always tear some off if needs be oh yeah see that one let's tear that down have that in the middle again that would be nice um and then we've got a couple of these going to attempted just to tear most of that butterfly off for this one actually sorry butterfly so you can go there Can go gosh you know I had just the right amount of papers what are the chances of that I've got no papers left on my desk and all of them have got five in them that's good isn't it? I didn't I didn't count or anything I just went until I, I felt like I had enough to choose from on my desk and there we are we'll call that women's intuition <laughs> to uh, thinking that I had enough. Right. Last one then. Yeah, I just find a great way to use up all those little little bits that we've got as well of papers and things. And especially end papers of books or uh, blank pages of books. Um, I, for some reason, have lots of those. So I use them as journal backings and for notebooks like this, you know. Okay, that should be, that should be plenty. But you know, use what you've got. Um, I've got this embroidery floss from my embroidery days, which I don't really get time to do anymore because junk journals have <laughs> taken over my life. Not that that's a bad thing, because I love them, but um, it means I've got a lot of threads, which, you know, I'm sure I'll get back into cross-stitch and embroidery again one day. But, you know, until then, I have got a lot of threads that I can use for stuff like this. So, But use what you've got. Um, we've all got different, different things to use, haven't we? There 
there we are and one final bow and that is for done <laughs> two left for me to do um but i'll do them i'll do them later i wanted to get all of the pretty ones done uh, kind of thing so five sheets of paper in each gives you what's that 20 sides for a little notebook I think that is just just fine and dandy um obviously they're small bits of paper but you know um, got the two pockets in there as well which I'll just put in a little card from the paper pad um you know a little a little Tim Holtz card once so I've done this final final knot there we go. I'll bring them in. Where are they? Here they are. So there we go. I've got four pocket notebooks made. Not bad. So as a reminder then, that's how those look. So we've got our, you know, the twine enclosure, which is also the, um, the binding. A nice little book plate, all of the different versions there. And then a pocket in the front. And just all these little bits of paper for writing little notes on. Like so. And then a pocket in the back. And you could do more to them. You could have a pocket on the back here maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with those. And I think that they're you know nice and flat enough for popping in a, a pocket of a journal. Um, probably like a, um, like a paper bag pocket would be cool or uh, a large envelope, that type of a thing is what I would go for. And as I say, I used the Global Land dies to get the book plates on the front and I think they look really, really snazzy with, with that. And they all look different. And of course the Tim Holtz paper helps as well. So there we are, I will leave it there. Um, we have made four. I've got a couple more to do. These are sort of the more masculine ones, I suppose, but um, I'm not doing this journal anytime soon now, so I'll probably make these up a bit later, but um, I wanted to get the, the pretty ones done because that is my, my current Tim Holtz project. Um, and I will leave it there. So thanks ever so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video, um, even if it was just a laugh at my atrocious binding skills or whatnot. Um, and yeah, I would love to know if you're going to give something like this a go. So as I say, I started with a 6x6 paper for the covers, and then inside is a 6x6 cut in half, and then trim down a little bit to give you, you know, the two little pockets in the front and back. And use up your scraps of paper, because I know we've all got them. There are plenty of scraps to be used in the world, so get them out, make up some little pocket notebooks, and you're good to go. I will say goodbye. Thank you ever so much for joining me. And as I mentioned, don't forget, there is a Global Land uh, discount code. If you are interested in anything like that, then um, check that out in the description box. For now, though, I'll say goodbye, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye-bye for now.